What if I told you that your backyard was once at the bottom of a shallow sea? What if I told you that a glacier, a great wall of ice, a mile thick, came swooping down from the north, scooped out Lake Erie like a giant bulldozer, pushed tons of dirt and rock south, and flattened your neighborhood? I don't care where you live in Ohio. Your home was once very different than it is today. Geology is the study of the earth, and we don't study the flora, and we don't study the fauna. We study rocks, and we look at the history of the earth through rock formations and also through land forms. A brief overview of Ohio's geology is asking me to put in about 500 million years of history into a, a brief summary. But actually, Ohio's geology can be broken up in two discrete packages. The oldest one is between 550 million years old to about 250 million years old. Now, all of those rocks are older than the dinosaurs. There, there's no dinosaur bones to be found in Ohio because our rocks are too old. And those are called Paleozoic rocks. And they can be limestone, sandstone, shale, and siltstone and they are distributed throughout the state in discrete layers with the oldest on the bottom and the youngest are on the top. The second major grouping of Ohio geology is our glaciated deposits and they are not hundreds of millions of years old. They are tens of thousands of years old. Wind and water and ice all shape the Earth's surface. Uh, water is the thing that shapes most of the Earth that we see around us today by carving out the rocks and forming soils. In the past, ice has been a very big shaper of the Earth's surface, particularly for Ohio. And wind is very important in uh, deserts in uh, shaping landforms. A glacier is a large body of ice, tens of feet to maybe thousands of feet thick, that moves fairly slowly over the landscape, carves out the rocks under it, and deposits at its front edge large amounts of material. Glacial Groves is one of the special state parks that we have in Ohio. I think it's the best place to see glacial erosion. It's a place the ice has carved out the limestone bedrock into very deep grooves. So you can see close up the power that the ice has. These grooves are formed not exactly by the ice, but they're carved by pieces of stone the ice has picked up. So it's a little bit as though sandpaper has been rubbed over the earth, but if you can imagine a gigantic piece of sandpaper being pushed very hard. The oldest glaciation that we know about in the state can be about a, a million years old, and then the last glacier left Ohio about 15,000 years ago. And so we have this tremendous gap in time between the glaciated sediments, which are no more than a million years old, to the Paleozoic sediments, which are the hard bedrock, which go up to 250 million years old. Why that large gap in between those two? Well, Ohio was probably above the water level at that time, and we were undergoing erosion. So the dinosaurs actually did walk around in Ohio at one time, but the evidence of them being there has now eroded away. So, What's the geology like where you live? Is it hilly? Is it flat? Any cliffs, creeks, or gorges around your neighborhood? And what do you think is under the ground where you live? Fossils, caverns, underground streams? Could be. Wind, water, and ice have been carving up Ohio for a heck of a long time. Trust me, Ohio is bursting with geology. The geology of Ohio, you can think of it as a cake, a layer cake. It's uh, horizontal layers that are all stacked on top of each other. As you go from the eastern part of the state, it consists mostly of sandstones and clays and shales and coals. And as you progress westward, the bedrock geology, which is what the hard rocks are, consists mostly of limestones and dolomites. And there's some shales and stuff mixed in there too. And then on top of it all, it's like the icing on the cake is our glacial deposits that were, that were brought down by the glaciers. Those consist of clays and silts and a lot of boulders that sometimes you might find in your backyard. Southwest Ohio is startling to people who are not familiar with it by the steepness of the terrain. And we have some very steep gorges, like at Clifton Gorge, and these are remnants of glacial erosion. 
not from the ice, but from the water. We had a great deal of water flowing out to the ocean from Cincinnati when the ice melted. Hocking Hills is one of my favorite places to see Ohio geology. It exposes cliffs of Pennsylvanian sandstone that have some very nice caves. And there are wonderful walking trails in between. But if you leave your car at the beginning, you can find it to be a very long walk to get back. One of my favorite locations throughout Ohio is Hocking Hills State Park, and specifically Ash Cave. That's my favorite place because it has 70-foot-high vertical sandstone walls. And at the very end of this canyon is a small waterfall that glistens down over the edge. It's just a wonderful, relaxing place to be. And it has, because it's bowl-shaped, it has very unique acoustics. Well, I love caves and caverns in the state, and probably my favorite is Ohio Caverns. It's just a wonderful show cavern located up near Bell Fountain. I find it really interesting to go underground and look at some of the formations, the stalactites and stalagmites, and, and uh, even the bats, I think, are interesting underground. So I enjoy caves and caverns. Our state parks are an excellent place to see Ohio's geology, particularly the Hocking Hills region or areas where there was a lot of rocks exposed. Also, we have excellent natural history museums in the state. For instance, Cincinnati has a wonderful natural history museum, and so does Cleveland. So the residents of the state aren't, aren't very far from Ohio's geology. They can just walk out their back door and observe. Picture Ohio. What does it look like? Do you think it will always look just the way it does right now? Uh, that would be a no. Geology is all about how things change. Slow change, like erosion. And rapid change, like that. Bam! I'm talking landslides. Landslides in Ohio? Oh yes. The forces of nature are constantly twisting and chewing and crunching up our state. Geology is dynamic. It is constantly moving. Sometimes the changes are very, very slow. Uh, we, we may not see any of these changes in our lifetime, but things are happening. The rivers are transporting sediment. There is soil erosion going on. You may even have landslides in, in particular areas where the, the slopes are unstable. Landslides are a big problem in Ohio, particularly in the southwest portion of the state, where we've got rapid erosion in the glacial era producing steep hillsides in conjunction with very soft rocks and landslide damage in Hamilton County has just been incredible. Matter of fact, Cincinnati is one of the most landslide prone areas in the country. And there's also areas in eastern Ohio and the hilly part of the state where landslides can be a problem. We're actually lucky in Ohio, we've had very few deaths uh, from landslides or rock falls, which is another common occurrence where a rock detaches from a ledge and falls. This usually occurs in the springtime when the soil is wet and becomes heavy and it can no longer stand on a steep hillside so it slides down and so we have a lot of destruction going on along those hillsides people don't build houses on those hillsides because they're not stable in southeastern ohio you can travel up a rural road and commonly find signs of the mass movement of rock down the sides of hills and those are geology changing Geology is the study of the earth around you, and it's so interesting. Your whole waking life, you can study geology. All you got to do is observe and think and ask questions and, and try to find answers. Hey, a snow day. Whoa. What if every day was a snow day in Ohio? Would you mind if every day was a snow day for, say, oh, I don't know, 10,000 years? Well, something like that happened in Ohio about 24,000 years ago. In this corner, the Wisconsinian Glacier. In that corner, the great state of Ohio. When those two came together, they wrestled the land into the shape it has today. The last two million years of Earth history contains the Pleistocene epic. The Pleistocene is known collectively as the Ice Ages. But during that time, there were a series of glacial advances or advances of an Arctic ice sheet south across North America. And in Ohio, we experienced at least three of those glacial advances. The most recent episode, at its maximum extent, approximately 20,000 years ago, is known as the Wisconsinan. Prior to that, the Ohio area was covered by the Illinoisan ice sheet about 250,000 years ago. And about one million years ago, we had a pre-Illinoisan ice sheet. 
A glacier is a perennial sheet of ice covering a land mass, and the way that it operates is it essentially slides over the land. It expands out as snow falls in the northern portions of the glacier, compacts to ice, builds up weight. The ice behaves plastically and essentially crushes itself down and spreads out over the land. Glaciers retreat not by physically moving backwards, but by melting at their extremities as the climate changes. As the climate warms, the front of the glacier melts back over time. Well, when the glaciers melt back, all of this sediment that is carried with them is dumped out and left behind. It just drops out of the ice sheet as the ice sheet melts back. So the evidence of the outwash plain, all of the sediment that has, has been flowing off the front of the glacier through meltwater, large Hill structures are sometimes left behind called moraines that are essentially piles of dirt and gravel bulldozed in front of the glacier and then dumped by these meltwaters. They can also leave a variety of grooves and marks in the underlying bedrock and glacial lakes as lumps of ice drop off and sink into the earth and melt. So there's a variety of landforms that we can identify with glaciers. A glacial erratic is a rock, a boulder, a cobble that has been carried by the glacier across the land surface and left behind as that glacier has melted back. We identify them as erratics because they have no business being in the area that we find them. So in the Cincinnati region, for instance, where the underlying bedrocks are primarily limestones and shales, we occasionally find at the surface large boulders of granite that have been brought south from the Canadian Shield by the glacier, caught up in the ice, and as the glacier has melted back, these rocks drop out and provide evidence for the past existence of a glacier in our region. What kind of animals lived here if it was nothing but cold all the time? And what the heck were they going to eat? As the giant wall of ice moved south, giant mammals were also on the move. I'm talking mastodons, stag moose, and giant sloths finding a new home here in the Buckeye State. The climate in Ohio was quite a bit colder, and so large animals were traipsing their way through Ohio. We had crazy things that, that we don't have anymore, like saber-toothed tigers, mammoths, and mastodons, and giant ground sloths. A lot of these were built to withstand the intense cold that was coming off the, the edge of the glaciers. Many of the Ice Age animals that lived in Ohio would be familiar to us today because they are closely related to some living animals. We would have seen bison in our region, that is, American buffalo. Of course, we have bison still living out in the plains of the American West today. There would have been some larger examples here in the Ice Age, but they would have been quite familiar to us. On the other hand, there would have been animals that would be quite foreign to us. The giant ground sloths, for instance, would be something that there's really no living representative of today. There are tree sloths, but they're much smaller and much less impressive in scale they would have reached, in some cases, perhaps a dozen feet tall and uh, several thousand pounds in weight, lumbering across the countryside with very large claws that they would use to strip the leaves off of branches, but presumably also used for defense. We know about the existence of Ice Age animals in our region by the fossil bones that they've left behind. Most of Ohio's Ice Age fossils have been found in areas that would have been out in front of the glacial ice sheets. So many of them have come from southern Ohio, from the Cincinnati region, from the Ohio River region, and across, of course, even into Kentucky, where glacial outwash plains, melting waters and sediments deposited from the melting glacier out in front of the ice sheet would be a perfect environment for depositing the bones of Ice Age animals. However, as these glaciers retreated, melted back north, they would leave similar environments. So we actually find Ice Age mammals across Ohio in a variety of environments, outwash, lake environments, pond environments, bogs, these sorts of things. During the Pleistocene, or Ice Age, we know also that humans were part of the animal farm. We did have Native Americans living in Ohio and the Ohio Valley at the time of the last glacial episode. Human beings did live in Ohio during the Ice Age and in other parts of North America. Uh, we know that they arrived here sometime about 12 or 13,000 years ago in Ohio. 
there are dates across the border in Pennsylvania that indicate maybe 14 or 15,000, 16,000 years ago. We have dates, believe it or not, in South America uh, that are maybe 30,000 years ago. So we know that they were here, that they arrived here quite early. When's the last time you saw a mastodon? Are you worried about the ongoing saber-toothed tiger threat in your community? As if. Well, they were here. So where did they go, these giant creatures? As the glaciers melted away and shrunk back to the north, the environment changed, and most of the Ice Age animals, poof, disappeared from Ohio. The survivorship of plants and animals is closely related to changes in their natural environment. All of those organisms are very closely adapted to their environment. They have certain survival skills, certain adaptations that allow them to utilize the natural resources of the land. And as that environment changes, those animals and plants need to track the environmental changes and change with it. They need to evolve through time. And if those changes are so rapid that organisms are not able to track, then they, they go extinct. The environment and the climate in Ohio has changed uh, dramatically since humans have arrived about 12 or 13,000 years ago. Initially, it was very cool, uh, open grasslands, uh, pine and spruce conifer forests. This quickly changed to a very warm climate, much drier. We have an influx of hardwood forests like we see today. And this pretty much stayed around for the next 10,000 years. The only real fluctuation in that occurred perhaps in the 16th and 17th centuries with the Little Ice Age, which was really prevalent in Europe and may have affected some of the late prehistoric sites here in Ohio. And the Little Ice Age ended around 1850, and we returned to this warmer and drier climate that we have today. Human beings did encounter Ice Age animals. A prime example of this is elephants. Both mastodons and mammoths were here and coincidentally became extinct uh, not too long after humans arrived. We know that many of the Ice Age mammals that we found in our region are now extinct. There are a couple of reasons for why that may be. It has been an area of some contention among scientists over the years. Certainly we know that the climate was changing. The glaciers that are found in the region are no longer here. So the climate changed and that probably affected the presence of these animals to a great degree. It's also possible that the presence of Native Americans entering North America from Eurasia contributed to their extinction through overhunting. Both of those hypotheses or ideas have been argued by a variety of scientists. I suspect it's perhaps a combination of both explanations. You're in Ohio, right? 500 miles from the nearest seashore. And you find a rock filled with seashells? What? Have you seen these massive mammal skeletons they got in museums all gigrotus and humongoloid? Or little teeny tiny itsy bitsy trilobites? Hey, in Ohio, you want fossils? We got fossils. Fossils are the remains of organisms or traces of organisms that lived in the geologic past and are buried within the Earth's crust. We typically tend to think of fossils as bones or shells, and oftentimes we think of dinosaurs as an example. They can also be the traces of animals, so they're not the actual body, but the remnants of their behavior, much like dinosaur footprints. The rocks in Ohio are a very diverse age, which means that we can find a lot of different kinds of fossils in Ohio. The rocks that we have here are from about 450 to about 250 million years across Ohio. And that means we can find, most commonly in, in the southern part of the state, marine invertebrate fossils, things like brachiopods, trilobites, clams, snails, and so forth. But as we get to the outer parts of the state, particularly up in Cleveland area, Toledo and so forth, we can find early fish and early sharks and early amphibians. And of course, we also have a period of deposition in this region known as the Pleistocene or the Ice Age for the last two million years where we can find evidence of Pleistocene or megafauna animals such as mastodon and mammoths and sloths and bison. You can find fossils in almost any road cut or stream bed here in Ohio. They're not dinosaurs but they're from much older animals, a lot of sea creatures and such. We don't find any dinosaur fossils in Ohio. They probably lived here because dinosaurs were land animals and Ohio was a land area at the time they were alive. But Ohio was an upland, a high area, so any rain that fell would carry the sand and the bones away. We can learn a lot about past environments from the fossils. They tell us whether it was an ocean or a land, if it was cold or warm, high altitude or low. 
For instance, if you go and find in your backyard clams and brachiopods and trilobites like you might find in southwestern Ohio, you would see that this was a marine environment. These are the kinds of animals that live in the ocean today. My favorite type of fossils are trilobites. They are extinct arthropods, somewhat related to horseshoe crabs if you had to pick an animal that was alive today. Of course, they went extinct 250 million years ago. Not everything you find as a fossil you're gonna find as a living animal today. That's because some of the animals are extinct, which just means they're all dead. Over 99% of all life that's ever lived on Earth has gone extinct. Extinction is a natural process. It's part of ending the lifespan of a species, which tends to be about two million years in duration in the fossil record. So as environments change and organisms fail to adapt to those environments, species will tend to go extinct. Although that sounds like bad news, the best part is that these extinct animals have left their descendants around for us today. And these descendants are the plants and animals that we know that make up our modern ecosystems. I know what you're thinking. Oh, right, fossils in my neighborhood? And even if there were fossils in my neighborhood, where am I gonna find a bulldozer to dig them up? Hello? You don't need a bulldozer to find fossils. In fact, it's way easy to find fossils in Ohio. Well, we're lucky in Ohio. We can find fossils in a lot of great places. The first place you might want to look is your local creek. Creek beds are great places because the running water exposes the rock that contains fossils in them. And you can go in, provided it's very safe, and you have permission, and you can go and collect fossils in those beds. Ohio is so packed with fossils that it's a wonderful place to hunt fossils, particularly in southwestern Ordovician Ohio, in the Cincinnati area. The Ordovician rocks that are exposed in that area have attracted people from all over the world to study the fossils. The fossils roll out of the hillsides and out of the creeks. We do have great parks where we can collect fossils. A couple of examples would be the Trammell Fossil Park, just north of Cincinnati. Caesars Creek Spillway Fossil Park, as well as the Hanson Fossil Site in Northern Ohio. Hanson Fossil Park is a community of Devonian aged fossils. It's just rich in its diversity, as well as in the number of fossils that you can find, various types of preservation. Caesars Creek Spillway is a great place to collect fossils. The types of fossils you might expect to find there would be those of marine life. Fossils such as clams and snails, cephalopods, as well as trilobites. There's plenty to see and plenty to pick up, provided that you have permission from the state park to go collecting first. Trimble Fossil Park is also a great place to look for fossils. It's just north of the city of Cincinnati, and once again, you can expect to find bryozoans, clams, snails, trilobites, crinoids, all remnants of what used to be a very diverse marine community. Both Cedars Creek Spillway and Trammell Fossil Park are designed to have the rocks exposed at the surface for easy access. You can see the layers of the strata exposed. You can walk amongst these layers, and they're both very safe and friendly places to collect fossils. Out of the way of traffic, where you can spend a lot of time on the ground, nosing around for treasures. Most places in Ohio where you collect fossils just like you to surface collect. That is, pick up what's off of the ground without digging any major holes. So what you need is good eyesight, some time, some enthusiasm, and a bag to put all your goodies in. Corals? Cool. But what if you found something really big, really gigrotus, something truly humongoloid? How would you even know what it was? How would you dig it up? All right, it could be a huge job, I admit, especially if you're trying to unearth a mastodon. We're digging a mastodon, a prehistoric elephant that lived here in Ohio about 13,000 years ago during the Ice Age. The mastodon skeleton was found by a farmer who was plowing in the little town of Rossburg, way at the western edge of the state. One of my jobs at the geology museum is identifying things that people find. I identify rocks, minerals, bones, and fossils. In December of 2002, a farmer called me and said, I've got some dinosaur bones in my field. And I said, well, sir, probably not, but why don't you bring in something to show me? And I thought he'd bring in a cow bone or a horse bone. Instead, he brought me in two mastodon teeth. My jaw just about hit the ground. I was so surprised because I thought he'd bring in some cow bones or horse bones and here to bring in some real prehistoric animal bones. It's pretty exciting. And we've been digging for three years and have about three quarters of the skeleton so far. We have not found the skull. We have found four teeth, but no skull yet and no tusks. I don't think we're going to find the skull because I think that was destroyed by the plows. 
Well, we've learned from this mastodon that it was a very healthy adult mastodon. It wasn't old, but it wasn't real young. We know that because of the wear on the teeth. We have no idea how it died. It might have died from natural causes, maybe a predator got it, or even possibly humans might have killed it, but we haven't found any evidence of that yet. Mastodons are not alive today because they became extinct about 10,000 years ago, and no one really knows why. They don't know if it was a climate that killed them off or if people did them in. To find the bones, we just have to dig, just move a lot of dirt. First, we take off the dirt that's on top, and for that we use things like shovels and trowels. Then we coat the bones with a layer of, of wet paper and then put strips of burlap in plaster of Paris and coat the bones. It's sort of like making a cast of a broken arm or a broken leg. Then once that hardens or dries, we chip out One, the dirt from underneath two, and turn three. it over and then we're able to take it back to the laboratory. Once hey, we take good. the bones out of the dig, we transport them back to the museum that I work at at Ohio State University where volunteers are slowly cleaning and gluing the broken bones back together. None of the tools we use are anything special, nothing that you can't get at a normal hardware store. The white paper we're putting on the bones is just toilet paper that we dip in water or wet with paintbrushes. The people that I'm helping me dig are all volunteers. Most of them have had no experience digging, but I'm running the dig as an educational dig, showing people how to dig, how to identify bones, how to map them, and that. So most of my people have had no experience before, but they really enjoy it. My favorite part about digging is uncovering a bone that hasn't seen the sunlight in maybe 9,000 years or for dinosaurs, maybe 150 million years. It's a lot of hard work to dig for bones, but it's a lot of fun too. Mastodons are cool. Any prehistoric animal is cool. Who were the first humans to live in Ohio? And don't tell me it was your great grandpa. Ever since humans started wandering the earth, they've been looking for places where they could find fertile soil, water, and food. Would that be for here or to go? when and if they could find these resources, and a few others, hey, they settled. Geology in the state of Ohio has a lot to do with where people live and where they do not live. The southeastern two-thirds of Ohio is very hilly, and those are areas where glaciers never reached. The northern and western two-thirds of Ohio is relatively flat, and believe it or not, about 95% of Ohio's population lives on glaciated sediment. And only the remaining 5% or so live in unglaciated Ohio. So where the glaciers were and where they were not 15,000 years ago has a lot to do with where people live in the state of Ohio. Geology had a lot to do with the migration of people into the Ohio and the Ohio Valley. When they came here about 12 or 13,000 years ago, the glaciers had just receded, and they really had to wait for that to happen. It wasn't a very hospitable environment until those glaciers had left. Human beings were able to enter either through the northern part of Ohio or up the Ohio River Valley. Earthworks have a lot to do with Ohio geology. There are two major types of earthworks. The first is the ones that exist on these hilltops, where they enclose ridgetops usually above streams. Fort Ancient in Warren County, Ohio is a prime example of that. Serpent Mound is a hilltop site. It's on this dolomite ridge in Adams County that sticks out over the Brush Creek Valley. But there's another oddity to it as well. It sits near the center of a crypto explosion, which was caused probably by a comet or a meteorite and has sort of defined this enormous bowl in the landscape. So Serpent Mound sits right on the edge of that. The other major type is these lowland ones, the ones that are in the valleys. These are the geometric earthworks, these enormous things with circles and squares and octagons. And these were placed in these outwash terraces that were left by the glaciers. And really they had to put them there because that's the only place where they had sizable flat land to put these enormous structures. Site Mound is an enormous mound. It is another one of these outwash valleys. Pink Creek Valley near Chillicothe is another glacial outwash valley where all this stuff that was being flown out of the glaciers widened this stream, made these big flat terraces, and that's where the Sipe Earthworks and the Sipe Mound exist today. These first humans in Ohio, what good did they get out of the resources they found here? Did they leave anything behind to show us that they really did live here? Ever since the first Native Americans moved into the Ohio area, humans have gotten a lot of good out of the resources hidden in this state's geology. Native Americans utilized Ohio geology in really a couple of different ways. One is they, they used the rocks that were here. Some of these rocks are bedded like chert that you can see in exposures or they mined them. Some of the rocks were brought down by the Canadian Shield. 
things like granite, igneous metamorphic rock, very heavy, dense rock that can be shaped into tools for battering and chopping. But also geology shaped the landscape. It created the river valleys that we have and the very flat till plains in the unglaciated plateau that you see in the eastern part of Ohio. So it was important to them. They chose areas where it was easy to live where they could grow crops, where they could do all sorts of things. So geology pretty much decided how they did things. Flint Ridge is a uh, state memorial that's east of Columbus uh, in east central Ohio. And Flint Ridge is actually a mining or a quarry site that was utilized by Native Americans throughout prehistory. And the reason they liked it is Flint Ridge is absolutely beautiful Flint. Ohio Flint Ridge shirt, or Flint, whatever you want to call it, comes in magnificent colors, all the colors of the rainbow. It's very high quality, it's lustrous. They made much use of this flint, and if you look at all the artifacts that are in mounds, the ones in the Dina and Hopewell sites, lots and lots of Flint Ridge material is in those. Flint is a very beautiful material. It's the state gem of Ohio, and uh, the pioneers used that as uh, burr stones and millstones and sharpening stones, and so it's a very useful material. The early settlers, they needed the natural resources that geology provides, such as coal, the early iron ore, there was actually iron ore, some low-grade iron ore that could, they could use to, to make nails and, and different things out of iron. Natural salt deposits that they could use. They could boil down and get the salt to feed to their animals and other things like that that they need salt for. There was natural resources available in a lot of these places along rivers, which were natural transportation corridors that the settlers could use uh, in their day-to-day -day lives. One of the major building projects early in the state was the building of the canals. The Miami Erie Canal, which connected Cincinnati and Toledo, the Ohio Erie Canal connected Portsmouth with Cleveland. They used a lot of the local sandstones, at least in eastern Ohio, for the Ohio Erie Canal. And then in western Ohio, they used limestone to build the locks. Those were very important ways for the early settlers, the early farmers, and even early manufacturers to get their goods to market. Does anybody really use geology today? I mean like normal people? Does it really have anything to do with our everyday lives? Uh, that would be a yes. From the places we live, to the fuel we burn, to the food we eat, good things come to us every day from Ohio's geologic resources. The geology in Ohio does have an impact on the way people live in Ohio today. If you look at the physiographic regions of the state, which are a direct result of glaciation and geology, we see these open flat till plains in the western part of Ohio and the central part, and that's traditionally farming. It's open area. In the eastern part of the Ohio, which is unglaciated, you see mostly timber and mining industry today. It's really not that great for farming. So it does decide pretty much what people do for a living in the way that they live. The major manufacturing regions of Ohio have been uh, traditionally located near the resources and near the corridors of transportation. And so the rivers, the Ohio River, uh, as a source of transportation, has helped to focus industrial pursuits, Lake Erie as well. Waterways are very important. Uh, we, can, we can get our, our drinking water, we can pump it out and purify it. We can transport a lot of our goods, raw materials, coal, iron ore, our grain can go by water, so water is, is very important. In Ohio, uh, the geology has given us uh, rich mineral materials. We have salt, we produce gypsum, we produce oil and gas, and we have coal in Ohio. That's perhaps our richest mineral material here in Ohio. We produce building stone or dimensional stone. Examples of the usage, the early usage of building stone can be seen in the lighthouse at Marblehead Point in northern Ohio. And that was constructed from local limestone. And the building stone that was quarried there was later used to build the Empire State Building. The Chillicothe Gazette building on Main Street in Chillicothe is a model of the original State House, and that was built in about 1941 using the Berea sandstone to reproduce that original building. We have great deposits of shale and clay in Ohio, and uh, of course shale and clay are the raw materials for making bricks and tiles and ceramics. We've had an active industry in making brick and, and tile in all forms and shapes and sizes in Ohio history. That's been a good industry for Ohio. Well, gravel pits and quarries in Ohio are the result of the melting glaciers. And so we now mine or quarry or excavate or produce sand and gravel. And we are one of the leaders in the United States of the production of sand and gravel. 
Well, windmills are used very effectively for the generation of power in northwestern Ohio. Northwestern Ohio is suitable for using wind generation with windmills because there is a good uh, steady wind in that area. And so they have been effective in getting that source of alternative energy going. Well, geology is with us every day. It's all around us. It's very important in our day-to-day -day lives. The soils that support our agriculture come from geology. The oil and gas that we use in our, in our cars and homes come from geology. The coal that supplies our electricity for our homes come from geology. The water that we drink, that's very important. So it, it touches us every day. I don't know about you, but I love to find out about cool stuff. Ohio's geology is awesome and there's a whole lot more yet to be discovered. So what are you waiting for? Another ice age? Get out there and start exploring. I'm Rick Sawash and I'll say it one last time, Ohio rocks.